ladies and gentlemen, from Starsky and Hutch, David Soul! <laughs> I think I remember that from somewhere. Well, actually, to be perfectly honest, it wasn't you that wore the cardigan. No, was it? It, it certainly wasn't. You're trying a bit hard there with that cardigan. They it's called a cardigan. It's a sweater. They, it's not. It's a cardigan. <laughs> it does up. So you what? Were you a bomber jacket man predominantly? No, they did dress me in leather. Ooh, really? Yeah. So quite yeah. cool compared to poor yeah. old Paul Michael Glazer. Well, actually, actually, what what happened? The way we set the stand, they call it trends or whatever. Of course, in the '70s, we didn't know we were setting a trend. All we did was to fight. He's got a blue shirt. I want one like it. You know that kind of thing. But you must have always lost because he got the cardigan. Right. Cardigan quite and cool. pair of jeans. And he got the car. He got the Torino with the white yeah. stripe. You got a leather bomber jacket. And what was your car? It was a Ford Fairlane. Rubbish. Actually, it, I was on a flat out. Straight, my car would out would out do the red that red tomato. Really? Yeah, that's what I call it. The but tomato that's sitting over oh, there. that thing over there. I know. Yeah. Did you have any idea when you were filming how much of an impact that ha car had all over the world? I mean, I grew up in Yorkshire. Right. In the town, everybody had a white stripe down the side of their Nissan Datsun, as it was, 120Y. Everybody <laughs> thought they were Starsky and Hutch. No, that's very true. It was. I mean, it was. Uh, it was probably next to. You know, it was probably <laughs> the star of the show, actually. No, we uh, won't have well, that. You were the stars of the show. Oh, thank you. Can't, but you. I just wanted to hear you say that. <laughs> were you aware of the impact you were having? Uh, I was having, or the no, car no, was the, having? No, the show was having. You were aware of it being such this global. Uh, and little thing. by little, you know, when you're first of all, you're cloistered away in a, in a studio for the first year, mm. so you don't get out and see folks at all. You're just mm -hmm. working 18 hours a day to get the show out, you know. And little by little, the uh, popularity spread. The first year, it, it didn't do very well. It wasn't really hot in, the, in our country. And then the second year just took off. Mm. Cops loved it. Four years in that show, I never got a ticket. Really? No. <laughs> was always it filmed in Los Angeles? It was in Los Angeles. All of it was in Los Angeles. But I remember driving down the Ventura Freeway at 110 miles an hour, you know, uh, weaving in and out of traffic and see the light behind me and say, oh, God, here it comes. The guy would finally pull it, slow down right away, and the guy would pull up next to me. And then he'd recognize me in the car, and he'd go, <laughs> I get that, you know. Which I, instead I get, I'm going to write you a ticket, <laughs> and you're going to get fined and lose your license. We, we did finally get banned from down West, downtown Los Angeles. Really? Why? Well, because you know, you know, film companies are notorious for coming into somebody's community and sort of taking it over, like it's your neighborhood, but it's my set. You know, yeah. so you go down downtown, downtown Los Angeles, and you get a couple of these chase scenes. Yeah. And Paul and I, uh, oftentimes, would go out uh, in the car on our own. We'd turn on the camera, we'd turn on the sound, we'd turn on the lights, we'd do the clap, and we'd do the scene. So you weren't sitting on the trailer that they normally, you know, no. when they sit doing dramas and they sit talking like this, <laughs> never looking. You actually were driving no, it. We did, yeah. The, in in the beginning, it was you know, put it on a trailer and drag it. Yeah. That's no good, you know. And we wanted more of a re sense of reality to the show. Now, I think I'm right in saying, looking down here at the people who've been on, you are our first American guest. <laughs> yeah. Why can't the Americans make cars? <laughs> Why no, it baffles me. I mean, the Mustang was a brief blip, but always it's been a hundred years of horror. Well, um, I, had a, I had a Corvette, and I loved it. And what loved did you it. like about that? <laughs> um, I realized a dream <laughs> in that car. I went out to the Mojave Desert, and I had the girl that I was with at the time, and we took our clothes off, oh, stark naked. The Mojave Desert is huge, and there's nothing but a straight road going across it. And took that baby and just floored that sucker, and went for 100, like 135, 40 miles an hour, stark naked in the middle of the desert. I mean, that's a dream, right? A few things you want to do before you turn. It, you're as right, old I was as just I am. thinking that is one of those, those huge lists of things you must do before you die. Drive a vet naked across the Mojave. Yeah, well, yeah, mm. that was great. Wouldn't that be a great. vet though. Yeah, but terrible... we pulled up in Boot Hill, and I, I won't tell you what happened then. But um... well, yes, you will. <laughs> right, of course, you're not here just to relive the olden days. You're here to yeah. drive our reasonably priced car around our track.
That was the idea. That's the idea, absolutely. And uh, we had the car specially decorated for you. Anyone want to guess what we did to it? <laughs> Let's have a look at your lap. Oh, no. God, no. <laughs> and here we go. Oh, dear, you're looking a bit concentrated there. Now, the stick tells me that you were a very, very good driver. I have to be honest, he reckoned you were the first guest that was really in with a shout of beating JK, who's our current leader on 1 minute 48 seconds. A bit violent with the gearbox there, if I may just well say. I've got to tell you. Hold on a minute. Uh, Let's just. All right. Coming up. What happened? We've had. All these people have come on the show and driven our reasonably priced car, our Suzuki Liana, without a single bit of trouble. We get the first American on, and you broke it. You broke the gearbox. But, okay, we have a backup Suzuki Liana, just in case, by some miracle, it went wrong. We sent him out in that. Let's have a look what happened, okay? Second car, coming along, into the next bit, still being violent with the gearbox, and into the second to last corner, last corner, oh. and... <laughs> Second one you've broken. Well, yeah, we didn't have to bring that up right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I mean, how to ruin the show quick, huh? Ask Sol to come on. He'll blow two transmissions. I can't believe it. Well, there we are, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. He broke two of them. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to break this one to you. The clock was running on your first lap. And you did set a time. Everybody thinks that's going to be contrived. It's oh, not. No. You have got a time, and I'm going to write it up now. Now, bear in mind, the Stig took this guy out, and I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to make you feel any better. I want you to feel worse <laughs> after what you've done to our precious car. Oh, no. He said you were as good as JK and that you were up for beating him. But you didn't. In fact, what you did was one minute and 50 Four seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was, um, I was coasting the last 300 yards. I know you were coasting, and otherwise you might have been up here. Yeah. But you're not. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we must save up and have you again. David Sol! Thanks.